Well, here we are once again in my Keto Notch Path kitchen. So it's December here right now and Christmas is coming up, New Year's is coming up. So I thought I'd show you an appetizer that we used to make a lot pre-keto is we'd hollow out a loaf of bread, put in some brie and bake it. And it was absolutely amazing, but we don't eat bread anymore. So I'm gonna show you how using PSMF bread, how you can do this for your, for, and stay keto and enjoy um, the holidays. So in here I have six egg whites. Yes, a little bit of yolk got in there as well. I saved the yolks because six egg yolks makes exactly one uh, batch of ice cream and I need some vanilla ice cream for my birthday to go along with the flourless chocolate cake that is amazing. So that's what happened here. So I'm going to whip up the egg whites to a stiff pea. That looks good enough. And as you can see, it doesn't move. Well, it's moving a little, but that's stiff peaks. Now to that, I also wanna make sure I don't over um, whip it because then things will flatten out if you're making a loaf of bread. I'm not making a loaf of bread today. And I never whip more than five minutes. Now we're adding 27 grams of egg white powder. And we use now brand egg white powder that we get on Wellivate. Why do we get it on Wellivate? We get it on Wellivate because they always have it and it's a good price. If you get it on any place else, you never know what the price is gonna be or if they're gonna have it. I also have a, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder in here to give it a little bit of flavor. So we add this to the egg whites. Now when I do this with my stand mixer, I just add the egg whites and, um, but here I just don't want it to blow all over the place. So we'll mix it a little bit and we'll continue beating. I used to fold in the egg white powder to the egg whites, but it never mixed quite well enough. So now I mix it with either the hand mixer or the um, stand mixer and it mixes it in completely. So now we have our brie. This is an eight ounce brie. They come in bigger, smaller. And for this, you do cut off the outer coating on top of the brie. Normally you wouldn't do that, but for this, we do. We have a small baking pan lined with parchment paper. And we're going to put it in a little circle so that it's a little bigger than the brie. Place the brie on top and case the sides. And you can add a little more to the sides if you want. This side doesn't have a whole lot, so we'll add a little more to the side. And a little like you would do with pavlova, you just lift it up a little, make little peaks in it. There. So, as you see, we have extra egg white. And so we're going to make a kind of uh, focaccia. If you didn't want to do the focaccia part, you might want to do three egg whites and just do encase the brie. This is what I did for Thanksgiving when I wanted a nice turkey sandwich. I made this into a focaccia and I had my turkey sandwich. Now, since this is focaccia, you don't have to worry about it falling. You don't have to make it really tall. 
And if you didn't have a loaf pan, you could also use this, you know, free form loaves. And as I mentioned in other videos that I do our precision PSMF um, every week. And if I didn't have my garlic bread, cinnamon bread, I'm not sure I'd be able to stick with it, but we have that every day. So now we put these in the oven for 30 minutes and we'll see you back here in 30 minutes. So this has been in the oven for at 325 for a half hour. And I'm going to see if I can easily put it onto a serving plate. Perfect. I can get this onto a cutting board. All right, so this is going to be amazing. There are several ways you can serve this. I have some, this is actually onion bread that I made. It's the same recipe, just instead of garlic powder, onion powder, which I always have sliced in in the freezer. Um, so we can test it with that. We can also cut this up. What I think, how I think this would be good is if you cut this in, it's going to be hot, so it might not cut that well, into like bite-sized pieces so people can dip or spoon and then you don't have to worry about double dipping. I'll just try it as it is. Oh, that works out really well. Mmm. 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 I really like this sliced into biteable, bite sized pieces. I think this would also be great with sliced cucumber, um, celery other little vegetables, pepper, whatever, but oh, it tastes amazing with that. But what I'm gonna do is sometimes you can um, top this with pecans or walnuts or cashews, but I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna do part of it with my hot pepper jelly. Now this is my cranberry chutney that I can, so the color's not that great but it still tastes good. So if you make the cranberry chutney fresh, it's gonna be a bright red. So let me try this. I don't even need those. This is like amazing. These like scoop so well. Mmm. Mmm. I love the hot pepper jelly. And you can also, if you don't want to dip things in, you take a knife and spoon it on. I just may be here tasting all day. Hmm. That is absolutely amazing. Your guests will love it. And it's a keto appetizer, keto treat. You can have it Christmas, New Year's, anytime. And no one's going to even know it's keto or care. So enjoy.